my name is John, and today we'll be reading Forward, Donald J. Trump, A Present Like No Other, by Victor Davis Hanson in the Washington Times, posted May 16, 2018. Conrad Black is a former newspaper tycoon, a celebrated presidential historian, and a popular com columnist in National Review. His latest biography, Donald J. Trump, A President Like No Other, Regnery, launched May 14, 2018. The following is a foreword to Donald J. Trump, A President Like No Other. Conrad Black's erudite biography of Donald J. Trump is different from the usual in medias rebus accounts of first-year presidents. He avoids the Bob Woodward fly on the wall on a tri attributed anecdote, and they say gossip mongering. Nor is the book a rush to publish product from forder, former insiders of the Trump campaign or administration. Instead, Black, a prolific and insightful historian, adopts the analytic method in carefully tracing Trump's earliest years in business through his various commercial misadventures, financial recoveries, and sometimes wild antics. Black's aim is to illustrate how much of what Trump has done since announcing his presidential candidacy in the summer of 2015 is hardly mysterious. Instead, Trump's methods are fully explicable by what he has already done in the past, in the sometimes troubling but more often reassuring sense. Black is neither a hagiographer nor an ankle biter. He seeks to understand Trump within the three prominent landscapes in which Americans had come to know their new polit president, politics, the celebrity world, and the cannibalistic arena of high stakes, Manhattan real estate, and finance. Of the three, Black is most jaded about the anti-Trump hysteria within the first two, not because the real estate business is inherently a nobler profession, but because it more often lacks the moral preening and hypocrisies of both the Beltway and tabloids. The result is an argument that the first president to have neither prior political nor military service nevertheless has his own demonstrable skill sets that are making his presidency far more dynamic than either his critics or supporters quite imagine. Black's unspoken assumption is that it is more difficult to build a skyscraper in Manhattan than to be a career politician or an evening newsreader. In Trump's rise and fall as a billionaire, Black never whitewashes his ruthlessness his fast and loose relationship with the truth. For example, he is not so much a cynic as a methodological agnostic, not a liar as much as a disbeliever in absolute secular truths, and his occasional tawdry P.T. Barnum hawking. As he guides the reader through Trump's various land deals, casino crashes, name merchandising, risky hotel gambits, in golf course developments, Black offers unusual insight into how Trump, or for that matter anyone else, could survive such a roller coaster of catastrophe and great fortune. While most of Trump's rivals share his same carnivorous ethos, very few succeeded as Trump did. What made Trump different from his competitors? Like his cunning his almost Thucydidean reading of human nature, and his sixth sense about timing and salesmanship. In Plutarchian fashion, Black focuses on Trump's physicality, especially his boundless energy and his impatience with nuance and self-doubt, desperate cunning, unflagging determination, unshakable self-confidence, ruthless Darwinian instincts of survival and a sublime assurance that celebrity will heal all wounds. Of course, the media and politicians were not ready for the naked 
applicability of these traits to the White House. But as Black notes, the proverbial people, after decades of misgovernance, were, as if to let tr tr loose Trump on their country, as both avenger and deliverer. How many times did critics recoil in shock at Trump's core epithets, such as Little Markle, Low Energy Jeb, Lying Ted Cruz, and Crooked Hillary, only to note that such appellations kept reverberating in their critics' heads, both appropriate and humorous, if often cruelly so? Whose careerist agendas fared better after provoking the counter-punching Trump? For Black, Trump became president because he outworked and out-hustled his competitors, because he saw that most seasoned politicians were split the difference 51% hedgers, and that the country by 2016 desperately wanted some sort of Samson to tear down the pillars of a complacent, if not corrupt, establishment, even if they and their deliverer might sometimes be injured in the rubble. Black instinctively captures the essence of the Trump paradox. How did someone supposedly so crude, so mercantile, and so insensitive display a sensitivity to the forgotten people that was lost both on Republican competitors and Hillary Clinton? Certainly no one on stage at any of the debates worried much about the 40% of the country written off as John McCain crazies Hillary Clinton's deplorables and irredeemables and Barack Obama's clingers, who were judged wanting for not capitalizing on the bicoastal dividends of American-led globalism. Black notes the Trump hinterland synergy. The country was looking for a third alternative to both free market economics and neo-socialism, and yet again to both political correctness and the Republican often groveling surrender to it. Or as Black puts it, Trump's rise was an expression of sub-revolutionary anger by a wide swath of dissatisfied and mainly not overly prosperous or influential people. But he adds that Trump was no third-party Ross Perot charlatan, or for that matter, a quiotic Ralph Nader, who came off quirky and without a workable agenda. Trump took a path that was far different from third-party would-be revolutionaries and seeking to appropriate rather than to run against the apparatus of one of the two major political parties. Most experts discounted Trump's Make America Great Again visions as anachronistic in the age of silly Cone Valley Cool, Peak Oil, the Knowledge-Based Economy, and the Information Age. Trump doubled down and became even louder about free but fair trade, legal, diverse, and meritocratic immigration, Drew Baby Drew oil policy, lower taxes and smaller government, an end to identity politics and political correctness and a Jacksonian deterrent foreign policy that avoided both optional nation-building and blame America first apologetics of Barack Obama's lead-from-behind internationalism. Only half the country was ready for Trump and his message, and perhaps less than that for the messenger. But it was the more electorally important half in the key swing states of Florida, Michigan, North Carolina, Ohio, Pennsylvania, and Wisconsin. Trump assumed that even in the age of high techies and billionaire financiers, one can still not build a tower without the muscular labor of welders, cement layers, and glass installers. Black's final third of the book is magisterial, as he recites nascent Trump achievements, tax reform, deregulation, the end of the Affordable Care Act, individual mandate, superb judicial appointments, curbs on illegal immigration, 
expanded oil and gas production, a restoration of deterrence abroad against a backdrop of nonstop venom and vituperation from the so-called resistance. He is certainly unsparing of the less desperate resort to discard the electoral college, sue under the emoluments clause, invoke the 25th Amendment, introduce articles of impeachment, and embrace a sick assassination chick of threats to Trump's person and family. Some element of such hysteria is due to Trump's ostensible Republican credentials. The left had devoured even their once beloved John McCain, as well as a gentlemanly and judicious Mitt Romney. But more is due to Trump's far more conservative agenda and his take no prisoners style. Trump's friends and critics assure us that his incessant twittering and carnival rally barking are suicidal. Black is too insightful to settle for such a one-dimensional critique, while often lamenting that Trump's bluster and rhetorical excess are hurting full appreciation of his otherwise solid accomplishments. Instead, Black sees much of Trump's targeting as comeuppance and long overdue, given a sanctimonious, corrupt media and a gatekeeping political class that weakened the country over the last two decades of fiscal, social, cultural, and military irresponsibility. Three final themes make Black, Black's book different. One, he writes at times from first-hand experience as one who has known and liked Trump as an acquaintance rather than as a partner or adversary. His citation of Trump's past displays of loyalty to friends and genuine concern for the middle classes may be illustrated in Trump's most unrepublican use of the first person plural possessive, as in our miners, our farmers, our vets, and our workers. Second, Black knows what it is like to be targeted by an overzealous prosecutor and how the criminal justice system can be warped well before the advent of a formal trial. For Black, the year-long and heretofore mostly empty pursuit of Trump, the supposed colluder, then Trump, the purported obstructor, is in some sad sense a logical trajectory of the American criminal justice system that gives federal prosecutors unchecked power especially when driven by political agendas amplified by the tabloid press. Few of us have, of us have ever had a Robert Mueller hounding us 24-7 with partisan lawyers, opportune leaks, and false news fueling his inquisition. Finally, Black is a singular prose stylist of what in the ancient world would be called the Asiatic or florid and decorative style, multisyllabic and sometimes near archaic vocabulary, ornate imagery, melodic prose rhythms, diverse syntax, and classical tropes of deliberate understatement, juxtapositions of Latinate and Anglo-Saxon words, and plentiful metaphors and similes. In the modern world, few in English write or can write any more like Edward Gibbon or Winston Churchill, but Black does so effortlessly and with precision. So it is often a treat to read in Isocrates or Caesarial in modern English. Most readers like myself have never met either Conrad Black or Donald J. Trump, but after reading this engaging biography, those of any political persuasion would wish to do both. This video is a production of the School of the White Crane. My name is John Brooker, and you can reach me through commentary on this video or through my Gmail listed here. Please share this video with family and friends and on social media. May God richly bless you, my beloved.